Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So at the end of last week's video, I mentioned I picked up a milling machine. In fact, it was over here on the floor on a pallet last time you guys saw it. I've got it up here on top of this bench. It's not bolted down or ready you know, to go yet, uh, but I'd like to start organizing some of the work holding equipment for this. So unlike a drill press that typically comes with a drill chuck that you put drill bits in, a mill has a tapered spindle. And I'm not sure if you can see there on, uh, on camera, uh, but there is a taper that goes up inside of the spindle. This is the part that, that turns. And you don't put tools directly in that spindle. Uh, you can put a drill chuck in here for drilling, um, but it has like basically an adapter that goes up into that spindle. And you can also hold things directly in those adapters. And those adapters are called collets. And I was really fortunate to come across uh, a building that was being cleared out that had these cabinets in them and also some old uh, tooling as well. And I really picked the stuff up for kind of a steal. Uh, and I also had these fabric, like sort of drawer bottoms, I guess you'd say, that I picked up from Ikea in the clearance section at some point in time. They were too wide. Uh, I don't know if you can tell. Actually, I cut this side off so that it fit in the drawer. And it's also not quite deep enough, so I've got this gap here. Uh, and these are those adapters that I was talking about, the collets. Uh, these have a taper on this end, and they go up into the spindle. Uh, they're aligned with uh, this keyway here, and then they're threaded on this end. There is a bar that goes all the way down through the spindle uh, that you put a wrench on at the top, and it basically pulls that up into the spindle and makes it nice and tight. Uh, it also tightens in. You can see how these are split on whatever you put in that collet. Uh, these collets were in the same place that I got these uh, cabinets from uh, and they were in really rusty and rough condition when I picked them up but I love restoring stuff. Uh, these went in the evapo rust uh, and then get steel wooled. I ran a threading tool through all the threads in the back and they are good to go but it's hard to use it like it is right now. Uh, I can't see the end. I could flip these guys around but I still can't see the end. It's hard to keep them organized. They jostle around in the drawer. And it's important that these surfaces stay really smooth because uh, they're centering on that tapered, uh, the, the tapered inside part of the spindle uh, so that they're, they run concentric, that whatever you put in here runs concentric with the spindle. So it's actually not good to have them knocking around into each other in the drawer like this. What I'd like to do is make some sort of a stand for them and maybe a stand that would also incorporate some of these, these other pieces of tooling that I have. Um, this drill chuck, this would be too tall. The drawer's not gonna close in there with that. Same thing with this real large boring head. But these two smaller boring heads would stand up in the drawer, as would the collets. Uh, the collets would stand up in the drawer, no problem. You can kind of see the, the depth back there. We've got plenty of clearance, um, but not enough for, uh, for this guy uh, or for that drill chuck. That guy's kind of close, but not going to make it. So we've got this extra space in the drawer. What I'm thinking is, what if I slide this carpeted section, let's see if I can do this with one hand. What if I slide this carpeted section back? No, nope, I'm going to need to put you in a tripod. There we go, that's much better. So what I'm thinking is we slide this back so that the gap is now in the front of the drawer. And I think with that done, there's plenty of room up here for probably two rows. Yeah, just enough room uh, for two rows of these uh, collets. These are, by the way, these are called R8 collets. That's the, uh, the taper uh, and the, the thread on here. It's just, it's typically known as an R8 collet. So I think we have room for those. Um, I only have seven of them, but that doesn't represent a full set. So I'm gonna want storage for more than seven of them. And then I think we can also fit some of uh, these guys in here as, uh, as well. So let me get some measurements of this space. And what I'm thinking is that we just have kind of a rack, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, 40, 50 millimeters deep uh, with holes in it uh, for these guys to slip into so that I can see not only the, you know, the physical size of the hole, but I can read the, uh, I can read the markings uh, on the end of the collets as these are marked with what size these are. So I'm going to grab my tape. Um, and I don't use a caliper for everything. It would be ridiculous to have a caliper this big, but it's just it's also not needed. We don't need a super precise measurement of the width of this drawer. We just want to get close and leave ourselves some clearance. 
Um, I used to have all imperial measuring tapes. I picked this guy up. Um, actually, I tried a couple different ones and I, I sent several back uh, to Amazon because I wasn't happy with the quality of them. This one's pretty good. I'll link this one down below if you don't have any tapes that are both imperial and metric. Uh, this is both, it's really easy to read. Nice magnets on the end. I like this one a lot. And this is a metal drawer so we can make use of those magnets. And this is an inside measurement, so we want to push the tape over. If you guys didn't know this, uh, the reason that the end of uh, this piece here on the end of a measuring tape moves back and forth, uh, it's for whether you're taking an inside or an outside measurement. When you're taking an inside measurement, you want to push the tape so that this is all the way in. When you're taking an outside measurement, you want to pull it out like that. So this is an inside measurement, so we want to push against it. And I'm seeing about 513. 530, between 513 and 514 millimeters. And then in this direction, we've got, this is like a fabric flexible piece, so I think we're gonna go, we'll call it 70 millimeters. It doesn't need to be exact. Uh, the other thing I'm thinking is, this is gonna be real long, uh, but not particularly, the base isn't gonna be very wide. I'm kind of concerned about it toppling over, especially with the drawer jerking back and forth, just opening and closing it. I'm thinking maybe we have like a part of it that goes underneath this section here uh, to stabilize it and hold it down. Because I don't know what I'm going to put in the cloth divider now uh, with this stuff out. But whatever it is, it's probably going to be heavy enough uh, to, you know, keep this front lip down uh, and hold this in place if we have a foot going underneath. So, all right, let's... Uh, Let's go design. guys and here is a design I came up with for this so I, I did end up going 70 millimeters wide for this part here and I had measured between 513 I think and 514 for the total length so I went with 513 millimeters uh, in length in this direction um, I did mostly uh, storage for the R8 type of collets with the machined bottom that fit in these larger holes I have one additional one with that same uh, that same size hole down here at the end for uh, some sort of R8 tooling with a larger top on it, maybe an arbor. Um, I got to look through my other stuff. I think I have uh, one with an arbor on it as well that's maybe an inch and a half wide at the top. Uh, this is for that half inch uh, shaft boring bar, and then I have a three quarter inch shaft uh, boring bar that I'm hoping to fit down here in the end uh, as well. I did take all the measurements of those shafts uh, with just a regular digital caliper. Um, I did a nice bevel as a lead-in for each one of the holes just to make it easier to locate those shafts uh, as you're sliding them down into the hole. Um, and I did put one bevel here just on the front edge um, of this because this this will be the side that is uh, going towards the inside of that drawer, towards the, uh, the carpet tray uh, in the bottom. Left all these corners as hard edges because they're going to be right up against the sides of the drawer. And I did put a foot on it uh, to go underneath that carpeted section uh, just to hold this guy uh, in place and to keep it from tipping over uh, as these everything we put in here is going to be pretty top heavy. And I put a nice uh, long bevel on the front of this uh, as well. And I think this is only maybe three millimeters tall, if I recall. Yeah, this is three millimeters in height here. Uh, so I don't think we'll actually see that carpeted tray kind of sticking up here on the end as that's pretty thin. 
Um, I split this up into three different pieces for a couple different reasons. Uh, you know, the big one being I don't have a printer that will print 513 millimeters uh, in width. Uh, but also these are, you know, these are not going to be hour long prints. These are going to take a little time to run. Um, so if I change my mind uh, about the way I want something uh, to go in this rack, like maybe I, I want room for more collets or less collets or these things don't line up well, um, it's modular. So I can change just one piece at a time. So I'll print probably this left one first, uh, make sure I do have a fit on those collets, um, and then I'll print the, uh, the center and the right. We'll see how everything fits, and uh, if I need to make any adjustments, uh, or I change what tooling I want to sit in here in the future, again, I could do that without reprinting um, everything. I could just design a new center piece as an example. Uh, and these are uh, components here uh, in SketchUp, so I can easily just export these uh, individually and get them printed. So let's... Uh, Let's get these printed out and see how things fit. All right, here we are, all three pieces off the printer ready to go. Let's, uh, let's see if this fits in the drawer. All right, let's get this stuff out of the way uh, so that we can slip those feet underneath the front. All right, moment of truth. So far, so good. Oh wow, that's uh, you know I was talking about not measuring with precision at the beginning of the video. I estimated that to be, I think I said between 513 and 514. Um, I went, I believe 513, and uh, I guess it tightens up a little bit at the bottom of the drawer because that is, it's perfect. It fits exactly, perfectly snug in there. So all right, let's see if uh, let's see if these collets fit. Oh yeah. It's a nice slip fit. Now, as I mentioned, I struggled a little bit with spacing on these, just, you know, how to space these guys out. Uh, I didn't leave a lot of room here at the back. My thought was I'd be able to slip my fingers in. Yeah, there's just enough room there to slip my thumb and forefinger in. Uh, and pick them up like this. These rear ones are a little bit tighter, but still easy to get out. And the front ones definitely plenty of room for my thumb uh, to go in there between them. Uh, let's see if these guys fit in too. So that is that's perfect. And this big one's not going to fit in there, but this one should. Ooh, that's a that's a little snug, uh, but it still does drop right in. Get you down off the tripod there for a better view. So like I said, it's actually from left to right, it's a really snug fit, which is probably good doing this in a modular fashion. Um, if there was play in here, these guys might uh, rotate out of place uh, just a bit, because again, this is fabric, so it's not, it doesn't seat up real hard against it. Uh, but being such a tight fit, uh, I don't think this is gonna go uh, anywhere. Um, this one's a perfect fit. This one's a little snug. You can actually hear the layers of the, uh, the 3D print uh, meshing with the, uh, the lathe marks on the shaft of this guy. Uh, but it does slip in. And this, this is plenty heavy enough that I can still uh, just line it up, drop it, and it goes right in. So I'm happy with that. And I left myself plenty of room here for additional collets. Like I said, this is not a full set. Uh, at a minimum, I think I'm missing the, uh, the quarter inch and the, I think the 3 16th um, to be able to hit most of the common tool sizes. Uh, this guy doesn't fit, it's a shame. I knew that uh, going into it. Same thing with the, uh, this drill truck uh, back here. This is just simply, it's just too long. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do uh, maybe some prints, uh, some 3D prints that these guys can kind of key into uh, that fit down in the drawer. 
um, or if I'll just leave them here in the fabric sections. I just want to make sure that stuff doesn't knock into, uh, you know, knock into each other. Like this guy, this is, there's some hard edges here on the knurling. If that gets knocked against the taper of this guy, for example, and puts a ding in here, this will not run concentric in the, uh, in the mill. So I've also got probably in some future videos, not next week, because I'm sure everyone doesn't want to just see stuff related to the mill all the time, but I've got quite a bit of, um, older end mills and stuff I've picked up over the years. Uh, I may do some sort of storage racks for these guys uh, as well. Some of these are double-ended. Actually, most of them are double-ended, so I don't know if it makes sense uh, to try and put these guys in little racks like this or if it makes sense to just leave them loose in the drawer. The larger single-ended end mills or end or just other shaping tools might make sense to have them in some sort of a rack. So I'll take a look at that in the future. So guys, as always, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me. If this is your first time catching one of my videos, I do a new video like this every single Friday. So if you're into this, consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, and if you are subscribed already uh, and you like this video, please hit that like button. Helps me know what kind of content you guys like to see. Um, I also give all of the design files away completely free for all the designs I feature on the channel. Uh, and you'll find the link to the STLs for these racks. Uh, down in the description of this video or on my site fpfdesigns.com. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next Friday. Mm -hmm.